think it's the box. It's real! Ah, look at those many pages. I've been thinking about the ideas in this book for literally for years. And in some ways it's a culmination of the, the ESO seed project, the research project I've been working on with collaborators uh, for five years now. But it's also, it's also more than that. What I wanted to do is write a book that can be read by anybody because I think machine vision technologies and AI powered vision is really it is going to change the way we understand the world and I give a lot of examples of that in this book. I've tried to write it in a, an accessible way while still you know using theoretical concepts because I think in the humanities we have a lot of theoretical ideas that really do help understand the relationship between people and that technology um, and I also wanted to tie it to a historical um, a larger historical perspective. So actually, the first sentence is really old. Well, about something really old. Argus was a giant with a hundred eyes, older than the ancient Greek gods, but a servant to them. He could see in all directions at once, and he never stopped watching. Even when he slept, only some of his eyes were closed. So you see, Argus, from the Greek myths, is an example of just how long humans have been thinking about machine vision. So the chapters in this book um, talk about how we see with machines. Um, and I've divided it up in different areas. It's, uh, seeing more is the first chapter. And it's about how at first we developed machines that could uh, seem to help us see even more than what human eyes alone can see, like seeing far away or seeing something that's smaller than we can normally see, right? Um, the next chapter is seeing differently, and that's how these technologies start to allow us to see things that we can't really imagine necessarily without the machines helping us. Chapter three, seeing everything, is about surveillance, and that's actually a fairly personal account. Well, not that personal. But it comes out of the personal experience of living in Oak Park uh, when we were on sabbatical last year. During a debate they were having in the community about implementing uh, this surveillance system that would track all license plate numbers. And so I talk about the process of living there, the understanding of l coming to learn how so much of that debate about surveillance in the US at least is very much driven by this sense of fear, of, 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 of anxiety that we hope Technology and surveillance and machine vision will help us, you know, calm that anxiety. Um, chapter four. Chapter four is about being seen and that algorithmic gaze. And this is where I get into questions of AI bias and how um, AI powered vision doesn't see everybody equally or fairly necessarily. Um, and and also what does it do to us to be watched by machines um, and humans constantly or much more than previously? The last chapter is uh, seeing less and it's about the blind spots and the many ways the machine vision actually doesn't see very well. Um, and then there's a conclusion which is hope because I think we, over the last five years, and what drove me to start this project is partly, you know, the, the, the worries about all the problems of machine vision. I mean, AI bias is a huge problem, and I discuss it a lot in the book. But I think it's so important for us in academia and in general to actually, to not just criticize, to not only say, it's awful, the world sucks, but also to try to find those possibilities for hope that give us cause to actually, you know, continue to live and have, try to develop better technology. So what I've tried to do in the book is to combine theoretical perspectives. I use post-humanist perspectives, um, looking at the human-machine relationship as an assemblage. That means like uh, a collaboration rather than us using machine vision as a tool. Um, and I try to combine that with these stories, both the personal stories and the societal stories, like what I talk about in the chapter about surveillance in Oak Park. 
Um, and also these different ways technology and machine vision is implemented in different cultures. Like in um, one of the chapters I discuss, uh, Amazon Fresh's uh, surveillance intensive supermarkets. So this, this is these supermarkets where you have uh, cameras absolutely everywhere and the idea is not to have staff. Everything's just run by machine vision, right? Whereas in Norway, they also have staffless supermarkets, uh, but using surveillance cameras in a much more limited manner without the AI um, aspect. And so that's an example of how different cultures, different assemblages of humans and ideas and histories and technologies, these different assemblages actually cause technology to have quite different impacts. I have so much more to say about this, and I will. But for now, I think I'm just going to run down the hallway screaming to my colleagues, my book is here! My book is here! Yay!